Hi, my name's Chris Young. I work at the Measurement Standards Laboratory of New Zealand as a length metrologist. Today I'm going to talk to you about ringing gauge blocks. Gauge blocks are basically little blocks of metal or ceramic which have polished ends and the ends can be joined together in a process known as ringing. Ringing can be used to create uh, longer standards um, using multiple smaller gauge blocks. When gauge blocks are brought sufficiently close together, an attractive force is generated. This attractive force is known as the ringing force. The ringing force is determined by several bits of physics. The first being that when you ring the gauges together, the air in the interface is removed and that creates a vacuum in that interface, which means that you've got the atmosphere pushing on the outside of the gauges, holding them together. The second bit of physics is the ringing oil that you use to ring the gauge blocks, which has a surface tension. So the surface tension uh, basically creates another force holding the gauges together. The third force is due to the fact that you've moved these surfaces so close together that they're basically acting as one metal themselves. And because of that, there's a bit of molecular interaction in that interface, and that bonds the surfaces together. A gauge block's length, also known as the interferometric length, is determined by the length of the gauge block plus a ringing film. This way when we ring multiple gauges together we don't need to correct for that ringing film every time we add another gauge onto a stack of gauge blocks. So the ringing film can be upset by having dirty surfaces or bird surfaces or inconsistent film thickness of the oil that we use to ring the gauges together. So when we have dirty gauging surfaces and we try and join them together it can often feel like we have a good ring and that's mostly due to the fact that you've usually got some sort of fingerprint oil on there which has a high viscosity so that can give you the false impression you've rung the gauges well together. So it's important that we clean the surfaces really well before trying to ring them together. So that involves using ethanol to clean the surfaces and then a lint-free wipe. And you might also remove the dust using a compressed air uh, to gently blow any dust particles off the surface before you ring them together. It's really important that we use the correct amount of oil when we join the gauge blocks together. And the type of oil also matters. So we use kerosene as the ringing oil, and I think that's quite a common oil to use to join gauges together. So. How to determine whether you have too much oil, the way I do it is I apply the oil to the gauge surface and then you see an interference pattern form. Now if you see the interference pattern there and you're trying to ring the gauges at that point you have too much oil on the surface. You have to remove the oil to the point where the interference just disappears but not rub it so much that you've removed all the oil from the gauges. When you push the gauges together to try and ring them you should only be pushing with a moderate downward force. If you push too hard you can scratch the gauges and if you don't push hard enough they won't ring together. It's important that when we join gauge blocks together we use the correct ringing technique and that involves bringing the gauges together perpendicularly to begin with and pushing down with a moderate force and you should feel the gauges rung together once they are forming a cross and at that point you can gently slide the gauges so that they are parallel with each other and that is the point that the gauges are rung. So you can use that process for ringing gauges together but you can't use it for ringing a gauge block to an interferometer platen. To ring a gauge block to an interferometer platen you need to bring the gauge end on into the interferometer platen and push down with a moderate force. It's really important that if we have a gauge block which we suspect is damaged that we do not try to ring that to another gauge block or to an interferometer platen. That basically will just transfer the damage over from one gauge to another. Uh, so we need to repair that gauge before we attempt to ring it and you repair it using a granite lapping stone. On a granite lapping stone you push gently on the gauge as you rub it over the surface and this will pull the burr off the gauge surface. When we've removed the burr we can view whether the gauge is ringing well by putting the gauge onto an optical flat and looking at the interference pattern. So in summary, the really important points of ringing gauges together is that you have a, a clean starting point and the surfaces do not have any fingerprints, oil, grease 
or dust on them. And following that, we need to use the correct technique to join the gauges together. By pushing down with a moderate downward force, perpendicular gauges, and then bringing them gently together. And we mustn't try to ring gauges together which are damaged.